subscriber growth has been a good story, but digital advertising, I was a little soft last quarter. So what's going on there in terms of where they're spending the big so, money? So digital advertising, a year earlier, um, um, we were in the third and fourth quarters of, of 2018, we saw colossal growth. We saw uh, high teens growth uh, in the third quarter and the fourth quarter, uh, 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 of, of 2019, uh, of, of 2018, I'm sorry, uh, we saw 32% growth. So, so tough comps. it's tough comps. It's true, though, that the, the, the moment we're seeing our subscription model growing faster. And I want to say that we're just beginning now to, when there's a choice between do we optimize for the subscription model or do we optimize um, for the advertising model, we tend to go with subscription now. Uh, there aren't many of those trade-offs, but for example, in this quarter, we're taking um, open market programmatic advertising away from our apps. This kind of, um, of, of display advertising tends to slow load time quite mm. a lot and just, just makes that experience not quite so smooth. So we're experimenting with taking that down and seeing if the extra load time uh, improves things for us. I wanted to also ask you about disruption. It's a huge theme here in Davos. I mean, yeah. you're, you're spreading your bets digitally. It's talking TV shows, working on That's podcasts. Right. How right. do you think about the multimedia strategy? Well, I think I mean, one way of thinking, we, we, we have a, a machine, our wonderful newsroom, uh, which we pour money into. And, and as I say, unusually for news organizations, we're, we're spending more money on that. We want to make sure that that intellectual property is, is made available to audiences um, in lots of different ways and to different audiences. Our podcast, The Daily, is a, is a phenomenon in itself. That's got a very young, it's essentially a millennial, significantly a millennial Does it audience. make money? Yes, it makes a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. We, it's got a couple of, uh, uh, at the moment, um, uh, advertising uh, slots in it a day. This makes tens of millions of dollars a year um, because it's such an attractive audience. This is a heavily engaged, significantly millennial audience with this, you know, in this very safe quality environment. Brands love that. It's catnip to, uh, to to the world's big brands. Over time, it may have a role in our subscription business. We're already, we're already market our subscriptions on it, but it mm. may be it's got a role because of the, it's got so many loyal uh, users in our subscription model as well. But I think that's a really good example of experimenting a new way of doing something very classic, New York Times journalism, finding a new audience and finding a new revenue stream. Facebook, friend or foe? I, I think a, a, a paying partner. Um, we struck a deal uh, with Facebook over their new news tab, Facebook News. Uh, where we've got a guaranteed uh, uh, fee for the Times' presence in that in that product uh, over over uh, a, multi, you know, several, a number of years and a significant amount of money, which will help pay for the journalism which why Facebook's going to get the advantage of. Why do you do that and stay away from Apple, for instance, and well, its news service? So I want to say we look at each platform um, um, uh, differently. Um, the dynamics are very different. What we get from each platform is different. Uh, what they get, uh, uh, what we deliver to them in terms of value, is different. But um, the Facebook deal is an example. We believe that what we've got is valuable, that what we do is closer to a, a Game of Thrones or a crown, if you like, so like a subscription piece of quality content on television than it is to generic, uh, free-to-use, everyday internet news. So we think it's valuable. We think our brand is valuable to these platforms. And over time, with each of our platforms, we want to make sure that we're getting fairly recompensed and that the platforms who get so much value out of us are paying their fair share of the cost of making the great journalism that goes into it. What's going to happen to the newspaper industry? I mean, it's not new to talk about declining growth of physical newspapers, we have but it's picked up. We, we have advantages, um, uh, which very few other newspaper groups have got. And I would say uh, both newspapers, but I also want to say um, significantly broadcast and cable uh, TV journalism uh, is Thank increasingly... Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, the point is... It, 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 it's not as far advanced there, but the fundamental transfer of dollars um, away from uh, different forms of linear advertising to the internet has by no means finished. And telev television is the next medium on the block uh, with exactly the same, the disrupted smartphone based uh, uh, um, uh, uh, competitors. And often, I'd say, this is including the Times, legacy players, currently legacy TV players as well moving a bit slowly given the scale of the challenge, you know, the levels of self-disruption and the courage being shown maybe not quite enough yet. So I'm afraid at the moment, I think it looks pretty tough. There will be survivors. There's, there are going to be some survivors. I believe the Times is going to be not just a survivor, but we're going to thrive. But it's very tough. And I do really fear, particularly at state level and local level in America and even at national level in Europe, for example, that you start getting loss of plurality. You simply get fewer voices, mm -hmm. fewer perspectives because the economics have gone so bad.